This is the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola in the Narrowgate Security Agency Studios. Hillary Clinton just opened up as a new magic show on the Las Vegas Strip. <laughs> For her final trick, she makes everyone's blank disappear. What does <laughs> she want to disappear? We're our voters. Brain. Brain. <laughs> Sarah Palin, she gets the way this game is played. <laughs> Here's a shocker for you. Not all of Hollywood is with her. Although conservatives are often shunned in the entertainment world, more and more actors and musicians are speaking out against the left's agenda. We've heard many on this very program do just that. And today, we're joined by Tanya Crow. You remember her best from her days on the mega-hit program, Knots Landing. Crow is also a longtime yoga instructor, another liberal field. Yet, as we've heard from Governor Palin, Janine Turner, and others, yoga's not just for the left anymore, either. Tanya Crow, bucking the trend on multiple levels. Excited to talk with her today on the Palin Update. Sarah Palin infiltrates pop culture once again, this time on The Match Game with Alec Baldwin. Palin weighs in on the Charlotte riots. The governor also talks about our beloved national anthem. A brand new installment of Liberty and Legacy with Tamara Colbert is on the way from Texas. Sarah Steelman is on assignment. Welcome to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. The Palin Update is sponsored by Narrowgate Security Agency. Learn more at narrowgate.com. Today we're joined by the amazingly talented Tanya Crow. She was a fan favorite on the iconic show Knots Landing. Since then, she's been a yoga instructor, a passion she shares with Sarah Palin. And yes, this Hollywood star and yoga enthusiast is not for Hillary. Instead, she's got common sense to go along with all that talent. And right now we do welcome Tanya Crow to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Tanya, thanks for being with us. Oh, it's such a pleasure. I'm really happy to be here. Now I know you, Kevin. <laughs> well, thank you, and I know we've uh, certainly have talked about this on this program before. You know, we've had uh, many people uh, out of Hollywood, people mostly know from Hollywood, uh, just to name a few: Janine Turner, uh, uh, Candace Cameron, Kirk Cameron, uh, Kevin Sorbo, and you know, so they're certainly out there. But as we know, Hollywood is very, very left wing, not unlike Washington, not unlike Chicago and so many other places. But uh, we know there's been a backlash to a lot of actors and, and, and people who are involved in the industry who, you know, maybe aren't with her, for lack of a better term, Hillary or Obama in the past. So, you know, Tanya Crow not voting for Hillary Clinton. Uh, have you have you felt any backlash there as, as someone who's involved in the industry? Yeah, I mean, it's I'm I'm just now um, getting back into it, so it's funny. It's a little bit more in my yoga world than it is in my Hollywood world right now. But um, just even living in California <laughs> and Los Angeles, um, you know, it's um, it's assumed, you know, that um, everyone has the same um, perspective. And you know, I was actually talking to a friend of mine recently, and she was like, you know. I, I, she reminded me that during the Bush Gore um, election, when Bush won, um, I um, came to my student's house to teach her, and she was devastated. She was basically crying that Bush was now elected, and when she, you know, she was just about to commiserate with me, sure. and she she came to her senses for a, for a moment, looked me in the eyes, and saw that I wasn't really on the same page with her, and she literally gasped <laughs> and said, you didn't vote for Bush, did you? And I said, well, you know, I honestly, I, you know, I cowered a little bit in that moment, and, <laughs> and I said, well, I, you know, you and I have never discussed politics. I really choose not to discuss politics and mix that with my, you know, industry. But, um, but yes, I did, and it she, this is a person that I had worked with for years, and we had developed a friendship, and she never called me back. <laughs> I never had another session with her again. And, you know, these are the kind of, like, ramifications sometimes for people that, you know, when they have a certain um, – I, I, I knew she, who she was voting for, but I never held that against her. So, no, it you know, does having seem... it held against me was – 
super painful. <laughs> yeah, it does seem to be one-sided. I mean, uh, so many friends who are not, uh, you know, lined up with me politically and, you know, there's mm-hmm. still other things. And to they're t- friends. Yeah, absolutely. And mm-hmm. however, you do see that, especially through social media and other aspects where people, mm-hmm. you know, they find out that, oh, wait a minute, a conservative or, you know, or other issues too. And, and, and I mean, you don't agree with anybody 100%, let alone a candidate and or a friend and, and to go out there and do that, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Yet they try to say that conservatives are intolerant of, of views. And, you know, you kind of get that uh, backwards angle. And you mentioned yoga, uh, politics. It, it happens in a lot of areas, too, uh, you know, outside of athletics or the entertainment industry. You know, teachers, for example, uh, anyone who works in the media. I mean, you are in a minority. And, and, you know, some people are just very quiet because they fear for their job or, you know, their relationships. And exactly. And the thing that concerns me really about this whole um, situation is I'm going to use the word that, you know, the denial that people have to be in and are in in order to um, stick with their what they call their principles or their values. But they're not looking at the reality of life. I mean, my father was a principal of a junior high school. OK, this is, this is the middle guy. OK, this is the guy that has the superintendents that are above him, and he has his students and his teachers below him, and he sees where these funds go and how they're allocated. And time and time again, all of these programs that, you know, like Head Start in the 70s, he saw where that money went, and it went to pay the salaries of people that were in the pockets of these superintendents, literally cousins and aunts and uncles that were janitors that were being paid more money than their own teachers, like funneling, you know, fun, like not the money, not going where it's supposed to go Sure. and true corruption. And now we're seeing true corruption, you know, on, 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 you know, uh, evidence of people with a personal agenda that's stronger than the agenda to take care of whoever they're supposed to take care of, whether it's the teachers and principals of a school or it's the, you know, president of the United States that's supposed to be, you know, uh, holding a government job and for the people. And, you know, that's my biggest concern of this election is the personal agenda that there is that has been, you know, in my opinion, <laughs> evidentiary, you know, proven um, on one of those, you know, in, in the case of Hillary. And that concerns me. I'm not, you know, like I'm not in denial about that. Well, you know, just, you know Donald, it, so. Donald Trump, while not an actor, uh, certainly has been uh, an entertainment person, whether it be through his boxing promotion, whether it be his reality shows. He has appeared in movies and mm-hmm. commercials. And you never heard a peep from liberals about him in a negative way before he actually finally threw his hat into the ring to run for president. All of a sudden now mm-hmm. these awful terms that are thrown out. You know, it's one thing when you call people a clown, a buffoon, what does that mean? But when you're saying a womanizer, when you're saying a racist, and and these really awful Mm -hmm. terms, yet before he ran, oh, everybody, Mr. Trump's great. Oh, he's so friendly. Oh, he's done such a great job. And that's true. And if you look at the evidence, that's all true. But now the same Mm -hmm. people, including the Clintons, you know, who who, who thought, who have said wonderful things about him in the past, uh, all of a sudden now they turn it around. And, And they play this game uh we've seen it before too with others in the reverse way um you notice uh you know they didn't like mccain they didn't like romney the other candidates but when they heard romney was against trump well then all of a sudden they propped up romney or when they heard trump took a shot at mccain well then all of a sudden they said well now we like john mccain and thank him for his service so you know it depends what they need at that particular moment to push a narrative Absolutely. And that's what I mean by personal agenda. That's a perfect example of a personal agenda that, you know, where does the line, like, it's just a, just a lack of like maturity on the part of, you know, um, uh, uh, where there's uh, objectivity. It's so subjective, you know? And to me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big advocate for um, exercising my ability as a human being to have objectivity. You know, that's, a skill and a quality that we have that is a gift from God to us. You know, it's a gift as a human being. And when it's not utilized, (laughs) you know, that concerns me, especially with somebody being given a really, you know, very strong, powerful position. Just the victim consciousness that I find that, you know, concerning in general, just, just 
you know, as a person, you have to fight that. It's very easy to fall into it. I fall into it all the time. But, you know, um, um, just recently they were talking about um, just the, uh, somebody, oh, oh, Cruz, you know, um, yeah. now, you know, he's not, you know, him, you know, uh, his, his, um, his position now um, being attacked for him not having principles. But it's like, he just has his principles are now he's now there's a ma- micro and a macro, you know, and he's willing to I mean, he's a perfect example of somebody that is able to rise above the micro of his own personal life and his own feelings that he may have had about the attacks on his family versus the ma- macro, you know, and the concern that he has for this country as a whole. And that's a mature. Objective, level headed, non victim consciousness that you know i that's why i um that's what i relate to on the conservative side i find that it's less you know emotional and it's more rational and that's kind of how i've always been as a human being you know i i i you know that's that's um i i or let's just say when i come from that place i make better decisions in my life (laughs) and um you know and that's who i want to you know i i I am concerned about the direction that the country has gone in the last eight years. And, um, you know, I really do want to see a different, you know, a different uh, path taken. And this is, it's pretty radical. I have to say that. I mean, it's very radical, but it'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds because, um, you know, the, 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 it's a lot of things have been rattled and shaken up and brought to the surface because of this. And, um, I'm actually grateful for that in, in the long run, even though it's uncomfortable and it can be, you know, kind of uh, scary to see, you know, this happen to, you know, uh, um, feuds or, you know, uh, volatility or, you know, between friends, for instance. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, the, um, um, out of that comes, will you know, will come, I think, something that is going to be really um, valuable to us as a country. Um that, that's a wake-up call yeah, that, that we all needed. That's you know? <laughs> well put. I, I agree with you on that 100%. I mean, we could have done this four, eight years ago, but, you know, McCain and, mm-hmm. and Romney and others were too afraid to take on Obama and his uh, past relationships uh, with uh, people and and uh, inexperience, whatever you want to talk about there, that was, you know, Sarah Palin tried until they muzzled her and, you know, things of that nature. Yeah. But you see it here, and, and, you know, when Donald Trump uh, says some of these things, that whether it's the crooked Hillary or the, the names or the quick sound bites, you know, uh, people try to get all offended instead of being offended at, at things that she's actually done to harm people mm-hmm. and our country. And it's so... You you know, bass backwards, as you can imagine. But, you know, you, of course, Tanya, uh, best known for your role as Olivia Cunningham on uh, Knott's Landing. What a, just what a great show. We, we were a Knott's Landing house. We didn't know what L.A. law was in our house because it was Knott's oh, yeah. Landing <laughs> all the time. Talk about that, that was must-see TV before there was must-see TV. And uh, <laughs> you played a huge role in that. Uh, of course, Knott's Landing, the long-running series, the spinoff of Dallas and uh, – and uh, you worked with such a great cast. I mean, uh, all the actors that you worked with from Donna Mills, Joan Van Ark, and Shackleford, Dobson, Michelle Lee, the list goes on and on and on. And, uh, and Bill Devane, uh, well, w- Alec Baldwin. Listen, William Devane, I got to tell you, that's one of my favorite actors. I, I love his work now mm-hmm. in the Jesse Stone series. He's 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 wonderful. But uh, you were right there with everyone. People really enjoyed your work. I, I know that I talked to people my age, your age, and, and, and older who, you know, thought you did such a uh, great job there. And I wish the show would be on. I wish it, I wish people could take a look at it now. I think some of the younger people who haven't seen it yet need to check it out. But uh, great experience for you because it was for everybody who watched it. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I can't believe that, you know, you sign a contract and you, you know, usually these contracts don't even, you know, uh, play themselves out. But we happened to hit a series that ran for 13 years and I was able to do 10 of those years. And, um, you know, just uh, I'm an actor because of the craft, you know, I mean, I just love you know, using my imagination in that way. And to have, you know, people at such a young age, you know, really be um, somebody that I could play off of and learn from just by who they are and the integrity of the work that they did. Um, 
it was, you know, the, from the writers, you know, the stories that we told and um, the, the relationships that were, you know, that were shown the depths of relationships. It's just, it was like a, a dream come true as far as, you know, a regular gig. <laughs> yeah. And I was able to actually even go to school and, you know, and have a regular life too. You know, it's the kind of series that um, um, I was able to have a combination of working on that show and yet able to, you know, go to some of my school functions and, you know, and have a really kind of normal, you know, school life and family life. And I still have friends from uh, elementary school that I'm still dear friends with that, you know, we're now raising our kids together and, that's great. Um, yeah, so it's it, it was really, you know, it was it was a special um, experience that. Uh, and you being, I can't you, know, even, you know, you being one of the younger uh, characters on the cast, you know, you tackled some issues there, like uh, whether it be drugs or divorce or, uh, you know, whatever Olivia went through that, you know, people got yeah. a chance to take a look at and maybe help some people along the and way. Relate I mean, to, these, and relate to. And relate to. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, these things, you know. And, you know. It happens. It I, was Nancy Reagan that was doing, you know, the whole drug. That was her agenda as the um, as the uh, first lady. And so we specifically chose um, my character, who was the goody good goody good girl, that it could happen to anyone. You yeah, know, because that yeah. was really what was happening, you know. And um, so it was really interesting to be a part of something that um, the whole country was focusing on. Um, which was drug abuse, you know, especially in younger kids and, and how um, rampant it, it really was in households that were, you know, that you wouldn't have expected it from. So they depicted that on the show. And I actually got to win some awards from that. You know, it was really, it was an awesome um, storyline for me to have. I didn't have a lot of major storylines, and that was one of them that was just um, really, f- you know, just uh, gratifying. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And and you, I mean, I, I don't think it, like I said, I think it uh, definitely, you know, did not go uh, unappreciated. People definitely saw what you did and what you, what Soap Opera Digest Award for you and, and other awards. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that that's, that's an honor. And especially for those nighttime programs, I mean, because I always, I mean, I always kind of separate, you know, to me, I don't know about you who's in the business, you can tell me, but when you hear soaps, like to me, you have the daytime ones where all the scenery is made of cardboard and it's in New York and you can replace the actors even if they leave. And then you have the nighttime ones mm-hmm. that have more of a real feel to them. And that and and I appreciated mm-hmm. that more. And I, you know, I mean, I was a kid watching. You were a kid in it. I was a kid watching it. And I, I some of the stuff still sticks out to me, not only your storylines, but, you know, with Jill going nuts. That was one that uh, definitely was a great storyline. And, you know, you tackled mm-hmm. issues that we're still talking about today. That's for sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, because family life and relationships and the human experience, it's pretty much, you know, it's kind of predictable, yeah. but, <laughs> but, but it never is boring, you know, I mean, look at reality TV now, all we watch right now sometimes is just real life happening, you know, because in the end, you know, the human experience, if it's honest, and if it's, you know, depicted, however, it's done through an actor or just through cameras watching and following somebody, um, you know, we are a fascinating creature <laughs> well, and it's interesting to see us, you know, <laughs> yeah. through this political uh, lens, how we're all responding in our own unique, wonderful ways. <laughs> well, one of these <laughs> to networks, the same, to the same thing, <laughs> one of these networks needs to pick, pick the program up. And so let's, if whoever's listening oh, today, let's, 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 let's get nuts, but me TV, soap opera, Hallmark, uh, whatever. Netflix. Yeah, yeah let's let's do this. Um, so you mentioned your yoga, and I want to touch on that for a couple reasons. One, uh, Sarah Palin, uh, you know, into yoga, and uh, Janine Turner, one of the friends of our program, also into it. And you know, yoga gets this. Well, maybe it's a misconception in some ways, but mostly liberal, as you mentioned, just like acting, but just like a lot of things, you know, broadcasting, mostly liberal too, as we know. But but you know, yoga has certainly had this whole hippie feel, this whole far left, you know, kale eating, uh, you know. Streisand listening far left mm-hmm. crowd, um, yeah. but, but not the case when I'm naming you know not only you but Governor Palin and Janine Turner and others. Yeah, and and you know, it, and we can be we can be meat eating, um, you know, very practical. <laughs> and it's twofold meat though too, practical. because you mentioned. You mentioned how uh, it's looked at one way, but then another way too. I've had some conservatives who have said, uh, you know, you know, there's some people that think that's a form of devil worship, right? 
Yes, yeah. right. Unfortunately, and, and, yeah. And I mean, so when Governor right. Palin, uh, you know, came out for lack of a better term, as as this huge mm-hmm. yoga person, and and she had little Trig doing it, and 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 her family, uh, you know, people are like. Oh, yoga. And you're like, yeah, even Sarah Palin uh, could do that. And, you know, that's why I laugh when, mm-hmm. you know, people try to put labels on people and then you have someone who is just the opposite of what they're painting and they're doing the same thing. So, first of all, tell yeah. everybody. I mean, you have the yoga, you have the yoga path that has a lot of different variations. So I think that, you know, you have the meditation variation, you have the asana or the physical poses that you do, and then you have the actual connected to Hinduism and reincarnation. And obviously there's people that have Christian beliefs that their their reincarnation doesn't even exist. So, you know, it can be a conflict for them if they associate the religious or the Hinduism with the yoga. And yes, the, the original poses were coming from that, aspect of that religion of Hinduism but what you know now we decipher just that part of just that part of it that's just the physical and so there isn't really a connection necessarily to the religion um, as a you know as a practice and it just becomes something that you do for your spine and that keeps you healthy and that has you know would you you know that just helps keep you vital and um, uh, weight bearing, you know, it's like a, it's a, it's the, you know, the huge, um, asset that I find about yoga is that it is teaching your body how to bear its own weight. And so it becomes a very, very, you know, practical, uh, um, exercise or, you know, um, um, practice that you practice just being in your body. It becomes something that you live, you know, and that you, um, that you utilize on a, on a daily, you know, uh, without practicing the actual session. It teaches your body how to relate to gravity in a different way. Um, and that, to me, is so powerful. And again, that strengthens your consciousness, your ability to go against your own nature, you know, and to have a stronger mind and to be able to utilize your brain in ways that, you know, maybe uh, you wouldn't do otherwise, you know. Um, it gives you a, 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 a strength of body and mind that is pretty powerful, you know, that I found has affected my life really, really positively. And that's why I wanted to share it and teach it. And, and you've been doing you know, it for years now, to right? Overcome. Yeah, I've been practicing for over 25 years. Wow, wow. And been teaching for close to, 20, you know, over 15. And, um, and changing people's lives. I mean, literally people that are scoli, you know, that have scoliosis, that yeah. have, um, you know, um, um, chronic pain in different joints, um, arthritic, um, um, you know, it's, it's pretty potent. It, it's, it's, it has its medicinal qualities that, um, you know, it's not easy. It's hard work in that regard, but it can truly change your quality of life from being in pain and not being in pain, you know, without having to be evasive or have surgery and things like that. So that's been my main focus with clients and people is, truly working with people that need rehabilitation in their bodies and they need to correct their posture in a, in a way that, you know, changes the quality of their life or that has been affecting their quality of life. And that's hugely gratifying. And the same way I like to act, you know, acting and entertainment and letting, you know, giving people a chance to just, you know, um, have a better quality of life. You know, that's always been kind of maybe something that has motivated me to do whatever it is that I do is to be a positive influence, whether it's through acting or yoga or, you know. So, um, so 25 years, Tanya Crow can safely say Christians, Jews, kids, conservatives, yeah, liberals, kids. downward yeah. dog, downward grizzly, whatever, <laughs> all good, right? It's all good. Uh, it's before, just a way to relate in the world that is... <laughs> <laughs> um, before we let you go, and thank you for spending so much time with us, and, and we really appreciate it and, you know, really uh, enjoy your work. But can you tell us, and, uh, and I know you said you saw she was on Match Game the other week, which is, you know, and, and I love that about Governor Palin, that she understands that we need to infiltrate pop culture, not run away from it. Um what are your thoughts on Governor Palin as a whole, and specifically on the fact that she is willing to jump in to, you know, what is sometimes the lion's den? That, you know, honestly, the one thing when you talk about Sarah, or when you mention her name, the first thing that comes to me is just she is powerful. Like she is 
a woman empowered, like the embodiment of what a real woman is, which is she is true to herself. You know, she, she knows herself. She's not afraid. She's fearless. You know, there is a, there's just a fearlessness to her of just, you know, being who she is. And as a girl slash woman slash um, raising a child, a woman, a girl. And, you know, that's what I want for my daughter yeah. is the ability to just stand on her own two feet and be able to, you know, um, be who she is and, um, and bring that, that natural power that we all have. Um, just, just stand in that light, you know, and just be, who you are, because that's all in the end, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's all you have. And she is so powerful in that way, in my opinion. Um, well, I'm happy you know. to hear you say that, Tanya, and that makes you a mama grizzly, too, because, uh, you know, <laughs> as we heard from Hillary in the Democrat convention, apparently she had to let uh, little girls know across the country that they can do what they want. And, you know, if your kid didn't know that already, you're a pretty bad parents. So, Thank you, Hillary, but we got it. Uh, dads and moms across this great land. But uh, Tanya Crow, Knott's Landing, yoga, not voting for Hillary, and uh, sister of <laughs> sister of Jamie. Got to get that in. Uh, great to yes, talk to you. Yes, of course. And, uh, oh, it was such a pleasure. Really Kevin. appreciate Thank it. And so we hope you for all that you're doing. You and are... I appreciate all your uh, you know your perspective. It's really refreshing and it's awesome. Well, Tanya, you're welcome anytime. We hope we'll talk to you again. Okay, take care, Kevin. For more on the wonderful Tanya Crow, check her out on Twitter at TanyaYoga13. Sarah Palin made a splash on a game show this past week. Palin wrote on Facebook, Nothing is more fun than the infiltration of traditionally liberal Hollywood. Gives us a chance to interact with those who may assume they can't have much in common with a common sense conservative. I always have a blast doing these pop culture venues. This one sure was. Here's a sneak peek of our Match Game episode with my liberal pal Alec Baldwin airs tonight as the season finale on ABC 10, 9 p.m. Central. I thoroughly enjoyed working with the entire cast and crew on this episode. My aspiring comedian nephew Peyton McCann accompanies me on these forays. He's the best sidekick in New York City. I love him. And check out my fellow game show panelist Jack McBrayer. He looks just like Peyton. Enjoy the diversion from all things politics, Sarah Palin. Of course, excited that Peyton was able to attend with the governor. Peyton McCann, of course, a great friend of this program. As riots crippled Charlotte, Sarah Palin weighed in, the governor posting on social media, they're not protesters, they're rioters, and this changed some things. The governor added a link to a story on disruptors trying to block a man in his car from getting by until they realized the driver was packing you can check out that story on the Mama Grizzly Radio Facebook page. And New York values on full display from New York Mike. Governor Palin posting an inspirational video for kids and adults on why we should be standing on our tiptoes during our national anthem. You can see that video on the Mama Grizzly Radio Facebook page. To see any of the governor's posts in their entirety, visit Sarah Palin's Facebook page. Follow her on Twitter at Sarah Palin USA and check out SarahPack.com. <laughs> Now, the Palin Update with Kevin Shola presents Liberty and Legacy. Here's Tamara Colbert. Well, it's official. The first ever historic convention of state simulation. It's over, it's complete, and it was a complete success. 137 delegates representing every state in the nation convened in Colonial Williamsburg this past week. It was an incredibly amazing experience because this convention, this part of five, a menu convention operated flawlessly. I got to be there as a fly on the wall, helping to make sure legislators had everything they need and the opportunity to concentrate and meet each other and discuss the one key axis that unites us all as the American states, and that is the growing federal tyranny. The fact that every single state legislator there knew and realized and wanted to solve the problems that the federal government has grown too big for us all and too big for itself. There's going to be more coming out on the entire details of the convention, but right now I wanted to just give you a, a little bit of a glimpse, a preview, if you will, of the amendment proposals that were put forth from the convention. Number one, requiring the states to approve any increase in the national debt. Number two, term limits on Congress. Number three, 
limiting federal overreach by returning the Commerce Clause to its original meaning, limiting the power of federal regulations by giving an easy congressional override. Number five, require a supermajority for federal taxes and repeal the 16th Amendment. Let me state that again. Repeal the 16th Amendment. Eliminate the IRS. Number six, give states by a three-fifths vote the power to abrogate any federal law, regulation, or executive order. Michael Ferris, co-founder of the Convention of States Project, really summed it up best when he said that the events at Williamsburg are going to be remembered as a turning point in history where the spirit of liberty and self-government has been reignited. It was incredible to see these legislators from Iowa to Rhode Island, from Hawaii to South Carolina, and everywhere in between, getting down to the nuts and bolts of these amendment proposals, tackling serious issues with their authority, with contemplation, and a seriousness as though they were actually in a legislative um, House discussing these very same issues. It was a sober undertaking by them all, and one that was very heartening to see that, yes, indeed, we still have statesmen and stateswomen alive and well and at our service today. Of course, we got a little bit of a visit from Patrick Henry and James Madison, who took time from their busy schedules to welcome us all to historic Williamsburg. But really, what was the most amazing thing is to see how everyone wanted to really pull up their shirt sleeves and get to work, and how they all came together. And you know what? We definitively set to rest our opposition's argument that a convention would be a runaway. It's simply not true. It doesn't exist. It's a myth by fear mongers. And I am so proud to say that I got to witness all of it. It was a smashing success. It was incredible. We are going to be talking about this for a long time to come. And as I sit here at Reagan National Airport, I can't help but just be filled with pride. Pride that the states have this opportunity. Proud of our legislators who got a job done and who can't wait to continue in this fight. I want to hear from you. You can read more all about it at conventionofstates.com this week. Tweet me at Tamara Colbert, hashtag Mama Grizz Radio. And for Mama Grizzly Radio, this is Tamara Colbert. Have a great week. Tamara Colbert in Texas. Tune in for more Liberty and Legacy next week. And to learn about Convention of States, head to conventionofstates.com. The Palin Update, including Liberty and Legacy and Steel Resolve, is on demand and available for download. So just head to mamagrizzlyradio.com, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Visit mamagrizzlyradio.com for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, like Mama Grizzly Radio on Facebook and follow along on Twitter at Mama Grizz Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Tamara Colbert, and at Sarah underscore Steelman. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. I want to thank Sarah Steelman, Tamara Colbert, and everyone here at Mama Grizzly Radio. Thanks to Tanya Crow, and thank you for listening today. A special thanks to our sponsor, Narrowgate Security Agency. Visit Narrowgate.com. The Palin Update is produced by Lena Anderson, the Andy L. Kramer, and Laurieann Lewis. Please be sure to join us again next time for another edition of the Palin Update right here on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.